we're here at IAV 2019 and I'm speaking with Fahad El Mahiri, Executive Director, Business Development at EDIC. Fahad, um, EDIC, NIMA, first question, what's the connection between the two? Okay, well uh, Emirates Defence Industries Company uh, actually came about, uh, I would say almost three years ago now, from the beginning of 2015. Uh, and it came together by taking the actual uh, companies that existed under Mubadala as well as Tawazan and some private sector companies. Uh, so they've come under the EDIC umbrella where we offer full shared services and they are now fully under one management system. Nimmer comes in, it is actually a joint venture between Emirates Defence Industries and some other UAE players uh, in the UAE. So it is a fully 100% UAE owned company and we own the majority uh, on that under EDIC. And the Nimmer vehicle, or the standard Nimmer vehicle, um, is quite a common sight now, most people would be familiar with it. Could you give us a, a, an update on quantities ordered, quantities delivered and that sort of thing? What we recognize in the UAE as the Nimr vehicle is actually the Ajban 440. This is the 4x4 four four, uh, vehicle. It's uh, armored to level 2 ballistic and level 2 blast protection capability. And this vehicle itself, I believe we've produced over a, a thousand or so of those specifically. Uh, overall, uh, Nimr, I believe our production, we've probably produced just over 2,500 uh, ending sort of sometime uh, late last year. Uh, we have more production uh, orders actually uh, ongoing in preparation today for the UAE um, and hopefully those will start production pretty soon. In terms of uh, where we are and sort of the updates, uh, we have been, again since the last year since I joined, really trying to focus on end user requirements, taking a look at what they really need, uh, specifically again our end user which is the UAE Armed Forces or the Land Forces, uh, could be a mix between Presidential Guard or the Land Forces itself. Um, but our focus has been really to listen and get feedback from them to understand uh, what sort of changes they may want us to introduce. Uh, we don't see ourselves as the end user, of course, we're industry and we're there to support the end users and this is something that we've been focusing on over the last year now. We have about 16 variants uh, in total uh, under the Nimmer brand today, so uh, everything from the 4x4 soft skin to the armored, uh, we have the 6x6 vehicles. Uh, I believe uh, last IDEX they introduced the Jace, uh, which uh, you may know as the uh, RG35. Uh, of course, this was something that was uh, picked up by Tawazan. Um, in order to uh, pick up that IP and uh, work towards uh, growing that development uh, and converting the RG35 into what we call the N35 or the Jace 4x4 and the 6x6 vehicles. Uh, we've delivered, I believe, 60 of those vehicles already today and those are split between Land Forces and the Presidential Guard. Uh, so they have been used, uh, they are being used in operations today and uh, I think during my presentation I showed as well again the video of the uh, Jace 4x4 coming back out of uh, an operation uh, where it was riddled with uh, bullets, around 52 bullets I think I mentioned there, all sorts of different calibers and it really showed the protection capability and the reliability that uh, the Nimmer brand is really pushing out today. Um, and of course all these vehicles are made in Nimmer's own facility um, and, and that's quite a sizable capable facility. C could you uh, talk us through the, sort of the capabilities of the facility? Sure. The facility itself is quite enormous. Uh, I believe we are probably the second largest outside the US in terms of facility with the production capacity that we have. Uh, if I'm not mistaken it's, it's about 800 uh, units a year or if you calculate it back maybe to about 7 units a day production capacity as possible. Um, we do have a lot of uh, separate segments within uh, NIMR uh, in, in terms of capabilities with sub-assemblies. So we have the transmission capabilities and we have everything on the driveline aspect, you know, the whole suspension array, uh, setting up and equipping the, uh, the engine, tying all that up together, uh, our, uh, you know, chassis assembly and, uh, and of course all the different uh, bodies or all the different uh, um, configurations that we have. You know, we have our own R&D capability, our own testing facilities. Uh, and it really allows us to be more uh, agnostic to, you know, try things out for the end user and the customer. Um, one of the new things that we introduced last year was uh, an EMC chamber. <coughs> And this is something that's actually being certified within the next month or so. Um, 
and uh, is a service that we are doing today for the end user uh, and allowing them as well to introduce any other vehicle uh, and to be able to, to do any EMC testing or qualification requirements on that. Uh, it's been something that's been more and more focused on uh, by our end user due to the fact that uh, you know the C4i systems are getting more complex, there are more requirements there. Uh, and it was required for us to ensure that we're meeting the certification levels of the, uh, the 461F specifically uh, to meet those requirements and ensure there's no interference uh, on the communications data and voice on that aspect. Um, something else we're focusing on as well uh, because uh, of our ability today um, to develop and set up uh, you know some mock-ups I mean this was something that uh, again with this interaction now more with the end user uh, the requirements are getting clear and clear uh, every time we sit with them and it's great because for us we can then go back to the drawing board and put something together based on their needs and we've been able to within a month come back with mock-up models uh, and actually put something up in two months that they can actually jump into and get a feel for and see whether it suits their requirements and how accurately we may have you know, picked up on their uh, their requests and whether we were able to to put that into reality. Um, so these capabilities, of course, are there. Uh, the blast and ballistic uh, protection aspect is also something very key today. You know, with the experience they have in the operations, uh, they're looking at the need to make sure that the materials, uh, systems, and everything that are available, maybe not just our platform, but maybe other platforms, to in ensure they do uh, pass those. So we have already done some testing in terms of the ballistic testing capabilities uh, and it was great to find um, <clears throat> we're actually working together with Rheinmetall out of the UAE uh, and they sort of used us as a test to, to take a look at our capabilities on that and the great thing was they actually went out to Germany to do the testing at their facilities and they came back with this exact same results so it was a proud moment for us uh, to see that okay we're gaining the capabilities and we have the standards in place and we have the competency to be able to run those tests so we would be able to do a lot of that now in-house and not have to rely on uh, exterior parties or even export controls and we're not limited by that.